Hi folks, Chris Mask from Eastlink Community TV's Off the Chip Wagon. Subbury foodie, new food sport, been to the World Food Championships a couple times, a couple kicks at the reality TV can. Basically, I like talking food. And that's why the Greater Subbury Public Library has asked me to do a few of these cooking demos, because you and I, we get to talk food. What's wrong with that? In fact, today, we're going to kind of revisit a topic from earlier, and that's cooking wild game. But we're not going to deal with moose or bear or venison we are going to deal with what is probably the most abundant bird out there to hunt. And it's not the goose, it is not the duck, it's actually the grouse or partridge. But are they the same? Is this a potato, potato, tomato, tomato situation? No, because those are interchangeable. This is the splitting hair type of pickerel versus walleye. There are differences. And with partridge versus grouse, there are differences. Okay, the gray partridge, the Hungarian partridge as it's known, yeah, the ruffed grouse is a cousin of it, but partridge, they're generally found in open fields. So tall grass, a few trees. That's why you require dogs generally to hunt partridge. But grouse, they do really well in the boreal forest. And that's why here in North America, they are just so abundant. Now, you can actually thank the Greek for the name partridge, because when you go back, way back, um, the Greeks named the partridge after something that uh, they're kind of known for. Whenever you flush one and it takes off, you get that kind of sound. Well, the Greeks interpreted that basically as breaking wind. Yeah. You're hunting fart birds. So uh, we're going to deal with hunting these uh, fart birds some other time. I'm going to deal with the aftermath of that, and that's cooking them. And when it comes to cooking grouse, there are, again, differences between the rough grouse and the spruce grouse. And then there's these copper-colored ones, which kind of look like a spruce grouse and kind of look like a rough grouse, but aren't quite because they got more copper feathers, but yet it's dark meat. There's a whole world to this, trust me. But what we're going to deal with is how to properly cook this. It is a lean bird. So the first question, once you get one of these birds, is, well, do I keep the skin on or do I take the skin off? That's entirely up to you. But let me tell you this. Fat holds in flavor. And because of that, when you start getting into once snow is on the ground and the food supply dries up, you get a lot more of the spruce grouse that are eating spruce tips and spruce needles and that leaves a bit of an unpleasant taste to some people. So for spruce grouse, yeah, skin them completely. But rough grouse, you can actually get away with plucking them and really have quite a nice meal. The other thing you have to be aware of when you're cooking these birds is that uh, there's different thickness in their meat. So they don't all thaw the same if you've got them in the freezer. Honestly, the best thing you can do is either cut them up Take the legs off completely like you would if you're quartering a chicken. Um, you can spatchcock them as well, whether or not you want to throw them on the barbecue or into the oven. But add fat. It's not really a big fatty bird, so fat is going to help you immensely when it comes to cooking grouse. Temperature as well. Uh, temperature wise, really medium well would be about as far as you want to push these. You still want to have just a little bit of pink in the meat. Kind of like you would if you were cooking duck. Uh, otherwise, you're just going to dry these out and really it just kind of, it's not so good. So when it comes to the actual meat itself, it's very much like chicken. But then the rough grouse tastes different, obviously, than normal chicken slightly. But the spruce grouse with the dark meat, that is completely different. I can tell you that the number of times people have said, I don't eat wild game, and I make them something with partridge, I've had people take leftovers home and hit my little buffet line at least three times and say, yeah, those chicken nuggets were delicious. And then I dropped the bombshell on them, you've been eating grouse. So it really does come down to the way you cook this. And that breast meat is going to cook differently than the legs or the wings. In fact, you really, when it comes to breaking the bird down, this is what's going to open up your cooking styles and your cooking techniques. For example, low and slow for things like the legs. There's a lot of tendons in there. And even when you eat it, you'll be finding you're pulling it out. 
But much like a turkey leg, if you go low and slow and braise it, that meat's just going to fall off the bone, fall off those tendons, and you're going to end up with some really nice meat that you can use for tacos or burritos or even just as a topping for your soup. So that's one way to do it. The breast meat, though, you don't want to go low and slow with that because there's really no fat for it to break down. So this is where frying actually does wonders for the preparation of this meat, whether you're going to turn to the deep fryer or you're going to turn to, you know, something like a frying pan full of butter. Because sometimes the KISS theory is the best way to go when it comes to cooking grubs. Keep it simple, smart guy. So a little bit of butter, some salt and pepper, and you're rocking and rolling. We're going to go a little different. We're going to, we're going to explore a couple different recipes here and uh, two different ways to prepare your grouse. When I say that it often looks like chicken, you're going to see what I mean. Give me a minute. So here we go, we've broken down a couple different birds for you, but one of these things is not quite like the other. And that's this one, because this is chicken. You'll notice, very lean, not a whole lot of fat to it. Easy to dry out. That's why a lot of people like the dark meat, because there's a little bit more fat on that when you're cooking chicken. And a lot of people cook the skin on, again, for that fat content, fat equals flavor, and fat also saves your meat. This is rough grouse. So not much color difference really between the two fleshes here, but uh, you're going to cook them pretty much the exact same way. Add fat and then go from there. You can wrap this in bacon. You can fry this with just some butter and some salt and pepper. Sometimes the KISS theory, keep it simple, smart guy, is the best way to do it. The thing is, is that when you prepare your meat, whatever it is, look for the little holes there, which might possibly have some buckshot still inside if you've been hunting with a shotgun. That's not a surprise that uh, you want to find in any meat that you serve anybody. <laughs> if you do leave this on the bone, uh, you can easily spatchcock it though, and either bake it or throw it on your barbecue. Remember, this one, the roughed grouse, you can keep the skin on it, but this one, the spruce grouse, probably a better idea to take the skin off of it just because of that extra flavor that gets in that layer of fat there. Completely different color meat, between the two. Much darker, much more deeper in color. Why? Basically it's the iron content. Same reason why duck looks like this. And you'll see that even depending on the bird, I mean you will get some color variances as well. But at the end of the day this is a richer meat and people will say well it's gamier. And that's why a lot of times people will fry this one and then use this more for stews and braising. The ironic thing is that as dark as this breast meat may be on the uh, spruce grouse, the leg meat is actually lighter. The leg meat looks more like this. But again, all those tendons, it's low and slow to prepare this. So for you today, what I'm going to do is uh, two recipes to prepare this. This one, the roughed grouse, I'm going to convert it to chicken nuggets, basically. So grouse nuggets, if you will. But the spin that we're going to put on this is by doing a play on something called Chicken by Cracky because instead of using breadcrumbs to coat this we're going to use Doritos. Any kind of flavored nacho chips and if you really want to boost the flavor beyond that get some popcorn seasoning and throw it on there. Oil temperature is key for this I'll walk you through it. Now this one here the spruce grouse this is where we're going to get a little bit more adventurous and most of the time people like I say they hide it in stews just because of that wild game taste. But for you, we are going to do a play on chicken piccata. So we're gonna do a grouse piccata with the spruce grouse. If something grows together, it goes together. So in our boreal forests, particularly up here, we have an abundance of things like wild mushrooms. So for my piccata dish, what I have here are some lobster mushrooms, which I picked and foraged earlier this year that I've now rehydrated in a little bit of uh, white wine. So that will go in with my piccata here. We'll serve this on some pasta. It's a couple really interesting ways to prepare grouse. I mean, there's a hundred, if not a thousand different ways to do it, and it's all gonna go down to your own personal taste. But I can tell you that when I turn this into nuggets and coat it with the Doritos, my daughter loves it. In fact, she's already asked to bring my leftovers. to. So for our first one, this is where we're gonna bread them. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to cut up your grouse into manageable sized pieces. I mean, these are almost kind of a cross between uh, what would be like a considered a chicken finger versus a chicken nugget. 
And we're going to coat them at the end with these things, which is basically crushed up Doritos. Whatever kind of flavored chip you want to use, Cool Ranch, Nacho Cheese, this is a Sweet Chili Heat, I believe, Dill Pickle, fantastic. There's options for you, all dress chips. I mean, people use that to coat fish, right? Um, this is a really easy recipe, and I mean, kids love this stuff. Big thing is, is always remember to season kind of each layer. So the chips are already seasoned, I mean, with their flavor. But this, your dredge, make sure that you add your spices. You can see there's a little bit of our broken antler barbecue rub that's uh, mixed in with this cornstarch. Now, if you use rice flour, it's going to be extra crispy. Cornstarch, super crispy. Regular flour works, though, as well. Potato starch, that's an option for you. Just a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper in the egg wash here. So when we're ready to go, we take our first piece, give that a quick dredge in the flour, and then we put it into our egg wash. And you're probably going to develop sausage fingers while you do this, so make sure you have something handy like a towel. And then we're going to roll this around in our Doritos. And basically we're going to continue doing this until everything is nice, coated, and should be ready to go crispy for the fryer. Put that on a wire rack, go to your next one, same deal. Cornstarch, egg wash, and then your crushed up chips, whatever they happen to be, the Doritos or whatever you want to use. This is actually a lot of fun for kids because, I mean, it's something you can do with them. It's messy, it's gooey, they're going to get a chance to eat it, they'll have a sense of accomplishment, right? I mean, look at how beautiful that is when it comes out once you bread it. And you also end up with the little sausage fingers here. So again, just have a towel handy. So one more quick thing about this whole chicken by cracky thing is if you don't have chips, you can also just kind of rummage through and use some other things. In fact, uh, this one here, which uh, is going to take care of the leftover gross that I have here, and I'm going to make a bit of a different sized little chicken strip, chicken nugget, just so that they don't get confused. Uh, this here is a combination of uh, nori, breadcrumbs, and uh, wasabi peas. So, I mean, the world's your oyster, really, when it comes to this, however you want to do it. And also has a bit of a funky looking flavor. I'm kind of curious to see how those are going to turn out, because uh, I've never used wasabi peas as a coating on this before. But hey, somebody had to put clam juice into a drink made with vodka and tomato juice and Worcestershire sauce and... Oh yeah, some hot sauce, celery salt. Caesar though, Canada's national drink. So what's to say that gross nuggets coated with wasabi peas and nori is not going to be the next big thing out there, right? The grouse piccata is really simple. And I'm just going to add to this by cranking it up a notch, like I said, by using some foraged lobster mushrooms from this year that I've got soaking in some sherry and white wine. Now... Super simple, salt and pepper to your dredge, whatever you're using, rice flour, potato starch, corn starch, flour, whatever. Butterfly the breasts, get them nice and thin, you don't want them too thick. Now with this size, they're going to cook pretty fast, but once you've got that seasoned flour, you're just going to dredge them like this. Really, really, really easy, because now they're going to be ready for a frying pan. So your conventional chicken piccata recipe doesn't usually call for things, like I said, like mushrooms. Uh, it doesn't generally even call for garlic, but I'm going to add garlic anyway. Just make sure you have all the ingredients handy and uh, have some fresh pasta to go with it. It'll blow your guests away because piccata is so simple. Capers give you that nice salty briny little bit of a pop. You get that beautiful acidity that just brightens everything up from the lemon juice. And then the parsley, again, its own little element of brightness. Salt and pepper to taste. I like adding some garlic. It's going to be a nice rich sauce to go on top of a pasta. And like I said, really, it only takes maybe 10-15 minutes to prepare. You'll see. Super, super easy. If you listen carefully, you can actually hear how this pan is starting to sizzle. Now, this is just a couple tablespoons of butter, but butter makes everything better. So we're going to start with the grouse piccata. So... As simple as this is, like I said, maybe 15 minutes to do this dish start to finish. We got our dredged gross. Make sure you butterfly the breast so it's not so thick. And one in. And two in. And we're going to let those go for a couple minutes and sizzle off. This here is what we're going to use for our pasta. And you can use whatever kind of pasta you want. 
This is some that I actually made and dried out, so we'll throw that in here. Before you do anything with pasta water, you gotta salt it. And I mean, it has to taste briny like the sea. And this may seem like a lot of salt, but in reality, it's not, not at all. So once we get a little bit of a boil going there, we're ready to take our pasta and throw that in. Fresh pasta and gross piccata. What more could you possibly ask for, right? So this is gonna go for a couple minutes. And then we're gonna start to build from there. Once we get it browned on both sides, We'll add a little bit of garlic, which doesn't always go into piccata, but I like to add it. And then your sauce. Your sauce is going to get created from basically some vegetable stock or chicken stock, whatever you have handy, some lemon juice, and finally the capers. And capers, I mean, they're really underappreciated. They're salty, they're briny. It's just such a nice little flavor explosion, particularly when this dish all comes together, particularly with that rich sauce and a little bit of pasta. Super simple big flavor. And finally, my touch, those mushrooms, which we rehydrated in a little bit of wine and some sherry. People are going to love this, I'm telling you. They're going to think you spent all day cooking it. Really simple recipe. Big reward. So with our piccata that we got going here, if you look closely, you can see how it's starting to brown around the edges. And that means it should be ready for a flip. Anytime that you're cooking things like chicken, grouse, duck, whatever, Meat thermometer really can be your savior because we don't want this to go anything over 160. And generally 160, 165 is what's being recommended for chicken, but we're gonna treat this more like a duck. And you can see, because we dredged it, we get those little brown bits on there, and that's perfect. Because that is a ton of flavor right there. It soaks up all that butter. Now we just gotta basically get the other side seared off and finish everything off to make our sauce. So our grouse piccata is doing very well. We've got both sides browned off. So let's start building the sauce. These are those rehydrated lobster mushrooms. Now we'll throw in our stock and our garlic. Now this doesn't always call for garlic, but again, your recipe, you make it what you want. The thing is, is that if you have this at the right temperature, which is about medium high heat, that butter you put in there will start to brown slightly. And don't think that it's burnt. It just develops this really rich, earthy flavor, and that's awesome. So our capers. Got a little bit of salt. You'll notice that I haven't added any other real seasoning to this dish yet because we're only going to finish it when it's finally done. And finally, our lemon juice. So we'll let that reduce. We'll let this be happy. You can say that was the dinner bell telling people that we're ready to go. Your pasta, when that's all set, you want it still a little al dente, just to give it that little bit of extra bite. But again, you're going to make this how you want to. You want to use cauliflower rice instead of that? Absolutely. Regular rice, hey, the world's your oyster. You do you, moon pie. You do you. So you can see, our sauce is reduced. Nice brown color, almost looks like a gravy. Here's where we're going to add some parsley, a little bit of lemon zest to finish. And then, check your flavors, check your seasoning. Salt and pepper to taste. This is just about ready to go. Pasta's up next. Time for chicken by cracky or gross by cracky. We use the rough gross for this one. So we've got it breaded with whatever flavor of chips you want. I used a uh, chili Dorito and some wasabi peas with some breadcrumbs. Remember, world's your oyster with this. Kids love it. This is the only part that it gets a little tricky and that's when it comes to the deep fryer. So if you have a deep fryer, great air fryer works too. You could bake them in the oven. I've got some canola oil going here, and we want this around 375. So we're going to take our first piece, drop it right in there. And we can do that with our wasabi pea coated one as well. Get a couple going at a time. We don't want the temperature to drop too much on this, and we don't want to make sure that we're not crowding the oil either. We want everything to fry evenly. Now here is another wire rack with a little bit of uh, paper towel underneath that has a catch basin. I like this better versus just putting it on a paper towel because this way it doesn't get soggy. And you want to also make sure that when you're doing this that we're not overcooking it. Because remember, there's sugar in the spices with the chips. So they're going to get dark pretty quick. So it's kind of a game of watch and learn. I guess that's the nicest way to say it. But they look good. I mean, once you get your timing right, beautiful golden color on that. Doesn't take long because remember, these are small and they're thin, so they cook really, really quickly. 
And now finally, we get to eat. So you can always make a little side dish, particularly with the uh, chicken by cracky or gross by cracky as it is. Just do up some tater tots, a little bag of those. Kids love them. But I mean, like, look at how beautiful this is, particularly, I mean, you had a little gochujang there with the ones that I coated with the wasabi peas. And of course, whatever you want in terms of breading for any kind of chip, those were Doritos. And the inside of it, once you get a bite in Nate, Lots of moisture, 150, 160 Fahrenheit, meat thermometers key for that. And then this one, where people will think you were slaving all day over it, like I said, it's only about 15 minutes. That's the uh, gross piccata. And again, this is the roughed gross with the uh, chicken fingers. And this, a little on the pink side, the piccata, that's good because you want to treat this like duck. This is the spruce gross. Ton of flavor. Thanks for watching. If there's anything you want to see in the future, reach out to me through social media, reach out to the library. Either way, get in touch. Why not? Hope you enjoyed it. Bon appetit.